In this video, I'm going to cover the 12 things you really need to know when sketching. First thing I do, I hit the save command. It gets the auto save going and I can even give it a name. The S key, I love this one. It brings up a modal toolbox, which means when I'm in the sketch editing, it brings up sketch related entities. When I'm out of the sketch, I hit S, I could do feature related options like fillet, revolve, but we'll start a sketch back on this face. Hit S, I'll sketch a rectangle. That's not the rectangle I want. I type in the search. I use this search all the time. Do a two point rectangle, start sketching. Now, if I want to bring on, I want to customize this toolbar, uh, just find what you want, find what you want, hit the add button with this little arrow, adds it in. If you ever want to get rid of any of these, simply drag them off. Constraints then dimensions. I've just found that this is a best practice. When you've got a sketch started. So it's easy to wonder, should you first dimension this or add constraints? I use what's called the description method. How would you describe it to someone? If I said I'm making a fixture, a plate where the two sides are always the same, the three holes are always the same size. This is perpendicular. These two angles are actually supposed to be equal. And maybe one little tip in front of adding more and adding dimensions, I like to add construction geometry. So I could set that this is a construction line and this is always vertical. Meaning just those midpoints will always line up with each other. And now I'd begin dimensioning. Placing dimensions as you go. As I start a sketch, you can type in 8.5 and then I hit tab and do 55 degrees. Hit enter. Great. So you can see it's already placing the dimensions as I go. I will say that sometimes this interrupts the flow of sketching for me, and sometimes I don't use it, but it can be helpful when you want to add dimensions and angles as you go. Redefining sketch planes. This is a great one. I've got a sketch of this little tiny recess, the shelf I want to cut out. And I just want to cut out a little bit, but it looks like uh-oh, I sketched on even with this face. I had intended to go off this outer face. What can I do? Right click on the sketch, redefine sketch plane. And I want it to be even with this face. Now that sketch is on that face, much easier to deal with. I can now cut this little recess just like I had planned. All right, selection tools. When I drag to the right, it's different than when I drag to the left. So, so it's pretty easy to remember. When you trend to the right, you're more conservative. When you trend to the left, the same box, you're more liberal. What happened? When I trend to the right here, I'm selecting these two entities. Because I was going to the right, it didn't fully grab them. Only when it's fully in the box, when you trend to the right, will it be selected. When you trend to the left, anything that touches or breaks the box will be included in that selection. When you're sketching, click as you go. That's what's known as chaining. But when you want to sketch separate entities, I sketch a line going off and click and then hover over to this check mark. It will complete the entity, allowing me to go sketch another line entity. So this is how I do single sketch lines is using that check mark. Another way to do the same thing, click and double click at the end and it finishes the entity. So do it either way, whichever works for you. Shortcut for doing constraints. When you pre-select two items and right click, 
it will shorten the list for you of what's available. I can tell these two lines could be parallel, perpendicular, equal. I'll make them perpendicular. That's actually wrong. Now, if I pre-select these three circles, the only options are they can be equal. So perfect, I'll make them equal. And just to point it out, when you pre-select two over on the right, anything that's not available is grayed out. So you get the same effect. Line to arc, this is a great one, especially when you're trying to sketch entire shapes. Line, line, click and hold at the end point, turns into an arc, and it's built in tangency. So you hover up, can continue to sketch the shape. Let's talk about interrogating a sketch and how to make it fully defined as well. So the first thing, there's a problem. I can't seem to cut this recess out, this sketch here. So if I hide the body that's in my way and I can't select it, I'll edit that sketch. And I need to figure out why it won't extrude. I'm guessing there's some, something wrong with one of the sketch lines, even though it looks fine. So I'm gonna define it. Even though I don't have to do that right away, I'm gonna do that first just to get everything kind of where it's supposed to be. Okay, okay. All right, so one thing that's interesting that just I may, I. So one interesting point, I shouldn't have to define this line since that length and that length are both defined, but I still do, so that's odd. But I'm gonna drag blue points, that's my, always my trick. I drag whatever will move and then I lock that down. So I'm still missing the height from either the origin or to another location in space. So this looks good, but there's this weird point here that's kind of, standing out it's moving around oh so that line wasn't fully connected to the other it was just close so now that i let go i hit q so what am i going to do i can delete the line and sketch a new one there it's sometimes the easiest way to reconnect and this is still the height i deleted the height Now it looks good, I hit Q. That looks much better, now it's extruding. Turn the body back on, now I can cut out this little recess on the face. Using profiles is powerful. I'm able to create this sing single sketch and extrude multiple features from one sketch. Let's look at it in another example. I've got an entire intelligent sketch what I want is three different depths. I'll start by extruding the first profile. I'll select it, hit Q, pull it out, get the right depth. Now here's the tip. In order to turn on the other profiles, just turn that sketch back on. And select the inner profile, the bridge, extrude that, select the third, give it a different depth. And you've got three different depths all from one sketch. Now how is this powerful? How does it matter? If you have one well laid out sketch, you can do multiple features. You can do revolves and extrudes. So starting with the upper boss, I'll extrude that. I'll then extrude the, the mid bridge and then revolve the bottom feature, add the fillets at the end. Pretty cool part from one sketch. And the final sketch tip for this video is actually not even a sketch tip. Whenever you're finished sketching, the fastest way to add or remove geometry, hit that Q command. It triggers the press pull, which allows you to add geometry, remove geometry, whatever you want from the dialog. Hey, thanks for watching this video.